why this this small performance? Well, a lot of it had to do with the fertilizer distribution system, which looked sort of like this. We had the fertilizer company selling to the federal and the state government, who would then sell it to the local government. And the local government was then supposed to send it straight directly to the farmers, but he sort of went through what was lovingly called unintended beneficiaries <laughs> into the farmers' hands. And this was mainly because there was a subsidy system in Nigeria. So the fertilizer prices were subsidized by almost up to 50%, theoretically. Practically, farmers paid the market, full market price for the fertilizer. Now, apart from the fact that there is corruption in the system, what this meant is the fertilizer company had no good distribution channel because they never needed one. They could sell it to the government, the government would send it down to the farmers. I don't need to know who my customers are. On the other hand, there is no, also no innovation necessary to reach your customers. From the government level, supplies were unreliable because of different bureaucratic procedures, corruption and whatnot, the fertilizer would just simply not get to you in time. So it might get to you after the season, but that's nothing you can do about it. There was no you passing of usage information, so farmers, farmers were never taught how to use the fertilizer properly. And if unfortunately the state government did not have enough funds, it did not buy enough fertilizer, so the farmers did not get the fertilizer. And all that boiled down to those problems in the firm, farmer level. It was not affordable, it was hardly available if it was, and then they didn't know how to use it. Which is when PropCom thought that the best way to supply fertilizer would be this. You would have fertilizer companies selling to distributors. The distributors would sell it to village level promoters who would then sell it to the farmers directly. And the village level promoters would be people based in the villages so that they could sell fertilizers directly to the farmers and teach the farmers how to use it. And it was, apart from using, a, okay, coming up with a supply chain is part of the work, but then how do you get to get, get this work? So the intervention idea was, let's create small 1 kg packs, which are more affordable for the farmers you use, and he can buy it and try it out on his land. And instead of selling through any channel, the village level promoter sells directly to the farmer, so he, it's more readily available for him, and it's readily available close to him. And there was also, if the village level promoters could use demonstration plots to teach farmers on how to use the fertilizer more effectively, then they would get, and also get some learning from it. So it was a creating a new distribution system or a new supply chain is not, is not really easy. So there were a number of interventions that went into it. The first one was called Fast Track, which is basically a pilot in two states to see does this system really make sense, would it work? And to check whether it would work, there was a resource chain was later made. And there was a measurement done at the end of the season to see how well the system had worked. The second one was what was called on track, and this is when the company scaled the system up to 12 states, where they looked for whether the changes that they were saying would happen, or the changes that they had found that did not happen or had happened in a fast track, whether those signs of changes were still there and were still being carried on. Then there was a measurement of those changes and what was done for the first time in PropCom was connecting the results that we found in the field to the log frame indicators and actually reporting back to the donor based on the log frame indicators. And after fast track and on track, PropCom sort of ran out of imagination and called the next intervention 2011 scale up. And this was done February to October and it was basically done to check how the company can continue this on its own without any help from any donors. So can the company run this distribution system by itself? I've been working in the PropCom program from 2009 to middle of 2010, which is where uh, I helped in implementing the DCD standards. Uh, the PropCom program was a 15 million pound program that sort of started around started implementing around 2008. So its initial first steps in trying to implement the standard were from mid-2008 to 2009 till, and then till the end is when it finally managed to use the DCD standards as a result properly in its entire program. 
for a while the pro program initially tried to implement the standards on its own which didn't work out so smoothly because it took a lot of time for the program to advance which is when it decided to get a few consultants, some expert help who working with people who'd worked with the standards before so that they could guide the program along and they didn't have to reinvent the wheel while they were doing the standards. In terms of how it helped, having the DCD system of resource measurement meant you had to have a very good track of all the information you were using or all the evidence that came in that supported why your intervention was there and it also supported what are the results of your interventions. So since the DCD system I required that to be there, it meant that the staff had to go collect that. And collecting that meant you had to get more in touch with the market, it meant that you had to be able to provide evidence of why your intervention would work out before you even launched it and of course later you had to get the impact assessments done so that you could get impact showing that your intervention had actually worked. Now while you do market assessments or you go out and talk to farmers or retailers or service providers, you get a sense of what the market actually looks like and then you know whether your intervention will really work out. It was possible for PropCom to drop interventions based on that. It was possible for PropCom to focus more on interventions based on what they had collected in the market. And this was something that wasn't done until before the DCD standard was fully implemented in the program. It has been very worthwhile working towards different parts of the standard. The, uh, when, you, when we tried using the standards, there was a lot of work involved. And it needed a lot of push from the managers, particularly the program manager had to support the process a lot and insist that the, that the intervention managers, those implementing, follow the standard. So that push was very necessary because it does involve a lot of work. But at the end of the day, when the results that you get out of it or the benefits that you get out of it, it's worth it. So having that rigor makes your system or your project more efficient. And that's what the standard brought us. And without the standard, it might have been possible, but it wouldn't have been so well done. The standard sort of laid out in steps what needs to be done. And having those steps laid out clearly is what the program needed in terms of figuring out, okay, this is what we do next. And then that's how we go about it. These were the achievements of the intervention. The first one, uh, where we looked into how many demonstrations there are, how many stakes in the sales that the company made of fertilizers. And here also is uh, impact in terms of jobs, norm, outreach, and income. Now, this is data only for the year in which that intervention was carried out. So fast track is only for 2008-9. And on track is only, this data only shows 10, 2010. And uh, another thing we also looked into was uh, what was the private sector investment or how much did the company itself invest in this process you know, from its own money to see whether they were really interested in it. 